those rankings are showing us uh, what's the current situation in each uh, ecosystem. So that's, uh, that's the idea. Um, and now if we can move on to why should why do ecosystems matter for entrepreneurs this is a reminder for the entrepreneurs in the crowd uh, we have always the conception that where we are doesn't really matter as long as we're doing our best you know we, we can be in a small room with one co-founder working on a stealth project and it really depends only on us this is not the case there is a reason why a vast majority of the unicorns and even the bootstrapped high quality startups are focused in specific cities. And the reason is that there is a massive network effect uh, to being in a, in a startup ecosystem that is good. And not being aware of this fact is a little bit lying to ourselves. I know this is a very uh, sensitive topic because you know, this is usually where we are is where our family is, uh, where our friends are and so on and so on. But uh, not being aware, aware of the alternative price or the actual amazing premium that you're receiving by being in a good ecosystem is a mistake for founders. You should take at least a few minutes to think about it and kind of like think, am I really in the, in the right place? The ecosystem hubs are giving you access to investors because investors are only usually in one location. The ecosystem uh, hubs are giving uh, giving you access to clients that are used to work with with startups. Many clients are not used to work with uh, with the startups. If you're in a relatively uh, small town or a city that is not very startup developed, uh, it's going to be hard for someone to take a chance of you. Uh, more importantly, uh, those hubs are giving you access to co-founders, uh, team members, suppliers, people that are like-minded that are not necessarily in the mentality of the nine to five. Um, they're also giving you access to knowledge and uh, events, uh, which is important. I will say generally, this is something that we always discuss. Building a startup is an emotional, uh, um, is an emotional challenge. And if you're not surrounded by people in a specific location that share uh, the, the insight that this is a worthwhile thing to do, it's going to be emotionally draining. This, after a few months, you would just feel like you're on your own when society is kind of like saying, what are you doing? So being in this place where you're surrounded by the like-minded people will also allow you a lot of emotional support in addition to that. Um, and that's, that's basically a lot of reasons of why you should find yourself in a good location. I do want to say, and this is important, you should not always aspire to become in the best location. We have a set and we have a life as well. And we, we a lot of us are a little bit limited, let's say um, that for a specific region or even a specific country. So within your set of limitations, uh, pick the right ecosystem for you. You don't have to be necessarily in San Francisco. San Francisco is for very specific, let's say, um, type of startups and ambitions, let's say. But it always makes sense to improve your ecosystem if you're not in the right place. Uh, I do want to say that ecosystems are also very much uh, um, uh, excelling in specific verticals. So depending on your vertical, for example, if you're doing hardware and IoT, uh, probably Taiwan would be a great place for you. If you're doing fintech, London would be a great place for you. Robotic or Densen in, in Denmark would be a great place for you. So you always have to customize uh, that uh, as well. Uh, the conclusion that we have for founders is very, very clear. We keep on repeating it. If you are in an underperforming ecosystem, you should either leave it or lead it, but do not stay passive in an underperforming ecosystem. That's, uh, that's maybe the, the biggest uh, conclusion that we, we have out there. Um, I will say for the ecosystem developers, because I know a lot of us are ecosystem developers from the public sector, uh, ecosystems also uh, matter economically in a way that you can't imagine. So let's take, for example, the, the ecosystem of Israel, how it affected the economy of the country as a case study. Um, so Israel was a developing uh, economy back in the 80s, uh, up until the 90s. Uh, and it was basically an economy that, is, that was lifted by its startup ecosystem, not the other way around. It wasn't an advanced economy that uh, created startups. It was a non-advanced economy that was lifted up by the emergence of its startup ecosystem. That's a very interesting thing to say that basically your startup ecosystem can pull your economy forward by leaps and bounds. 
Uh, how do you get uh, uh, benefits, economic benefits from startup ecosystems? First of all, uh, creating high quality jobs, which means more taxes. Many people in Israel are working in startup sector. That creates a lot of money for uh, the government from uh, tax, taxes. Exits, every time you have an exit, you're being taxed. And again, more money for the government to invest in social elements or uh, anything like that, infrastructure and so on. Um, you attract foreign investors and entrepreneurs if you have a successful ecosystem, a foreign direct investment, again, a foreign currency flowing to your country. Um, I think this point about preventing the brain drain is the most important one. Uh, every country is losing, uh, many, many countries, not every country, because some countries are gaining when someone is losing. Uh, we're losing our best talent. Uh, if our ecosystem is underperforming, the most ambitious people will go somewhere else. And this is um, a cost that is staggering. And uh, we don't realize it, but uh, um, uh, this is a cost that is extremely painful. So uh, preventing brain drain by creating a good startup ecosystem, you're keeping your most important talent within the country and city. And that's, uh, that's important. Uh, Another uh, things are you have more strategic benefits like re resilience to shocks like wars and pandemics and weather conditions. So the beauty is um, if uh, uh, something happens, uh, something bad happens in the world, like we have a crazy year this year, uh, startup ecosystems are actually making you a lot more resilient. So for example, if you would prefer in 2020 or 2021 to have a great startup ecosystem or to have a great tourism sector, you would vote for a great startup ecosystem, right? Because uh, there are, uh, tourism is a little bit fragile. Startup ecosystems are anti-fragile, and that's absolutely great. Uh, startup ecosystems also improve your country image and its strategic and geopolitical situation. For example, going back again to Israel, Israel signed a few peace agreements in the last few months, uh, derived from its technological uh, ability to uh, do joint ventures with other countries and so on. So you have a lot of benefits that are basically creating a situation where a country, and not only its economy, also its strategic, look, uh, strategic environment, is growing leaps and bounds only by developing a real high quality startup ecosystem. So I'm hoping those, those are enough reasons of why you should actually really invest in building your startup ecosystem. I would just say and quickly run to our latest report, which is a, a little bit obsolete because another one is arriving either in the end of April or the beginning of May. Um, I will say that uh, we're, we're ranking the ecosystems of 1,000 cities, 100 countries. We'll share a few results with you as we're uh, at it, if we're at it already. So um, what we've seen for, uh, for uh, the country level, uh, there are a few good news here. Uh, but let, let's start with news in general. First of all, there is a, a club of a big four. Uh, this is a club that kind of created a little bit of a margin of all the others. We're talking about USA. United Kingdom, Israel, and Canada. Those are the top four, uh, let's say, countries in related to startup ecosystem. However, the good news is that the smaller countries like uh, uh, Israel is one of them, Estonia, Sweden, Finland, all of them are countries of less than 10 million uh, people are all here in the top rankings. So it shows you that actually being small uh, is sometimes an advantage on startup ecosystem development. We see time after time a small ecosystem can go full speed ahead and, and can be very, very synced in those efforts. So that's, uh, that's good news for us, uh, for the small countries. Um, I do wanna say there is one country you would see over here that is really creating leaps in, uh, in its startup ecosystem. We're of course talking about China, uh, currently ranked number 14 in the world, made a jump of 13 places. Um, a trend that will uh, continue, although a very interesting trend because it's basically relatively separate ecosystem. It's not that connected to the global ecosystem. So it's, it's pretty interesting to see how a domestic driven ecosystem is uh, very high up the ranks. Uh, and of course, we always congratulate uh, the countries that made their debuts for the first time, Liechtenstein, Panama, Cape Verde, uh, that we're going to have someone in the uh, hopefully Milton speaking about uh, in the panel about how did they do it, what did they do exactly? Uh, Kuwait, Mongolia, Somalia, a very interesting case study as well, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nepal. So we see over here that there are new countries joining the game. Absolutely um, great to see it. 
I'll just switch uh, for a second for the cities and uh, go over a few insights that have to do uh, with the cities. Uh, first of all, San Francisco is a league of its own. You can see it in the total score. We're talking about a very big gap still. Uh, so for everyone who is uh, kind of like saying that San Francisco is going down, it does, but it's going to take ages for someone to overthrow San Francisco. Uh, it's, it's really a very, very big uh, margin over here. Uh, on the cities, we see a top five club uh, of cities that actually create this margin. This is San Francisco, London, Boston, uh, and uh, uh, LA. Uh, so you, you have a few, uh, and of course, New York. So you have a few cities that are really overperforming over here um, and created the moat of a network effect that is very, very powerful. Uh, needless to say, the bigger the city is, the more advantages uh, it has uh, as well. And that's a little bit of a sad fact, but it, it does create a lot of leverage when your city is big and you have millions of people. Uh, some interesting uh, ecosystems. We have two Chinese cities and one Russian city in the top 10. Again, a big scale and very, very strong domestic ecosystems that most of us are not really aware of. And uh, very interesting things are happening within those ecosystems. Uh, two major gainers in the last report, Sao Paulo, the only ecosystem in Latin America that is in the top 20, and Taipei, uh, Taiwan as well. A very, very good showing uh, uh, from, uh, from Taipei and Taiwan in the, in the country uh, rankings as well. So um, that's good news. Uh, I will say there is hope for the smaller ecosystems. You can see over here, Santa Barbara and Boulder. Uh, both of them are ranked uh, uh, very high in the top 100, although their population is very small. So good news. And uh, the small ecosystems can all also, uh, let's say, uh, make, it, uh, make it happen. Uh, good. And once again, a reminder, if you have any questions, uh, you have a Q&A button. I'll try to get to it uh, when I can. So feel free uh, because I'm not necessarily uh, tracking, uh, tracking the chat. Now let's uh, speak a little bit about uh, the topic for today. So startup ecosystem promotion, right? Like let's say now that we know the major benefits that if our country or our city has a great ecosystem, we understand what are the benefits. We, we, we went over a few of them and they're absolutely amazing. How do we promote? How do we make sure that uh, we promote it? But first of all, let's talk about the current situation. So um, we always consider a startup ecosystem. It's either a city or a country, usually a city, by the way, as a product. We don't think there is any difference between a city and a product. In the end of the day, you have a product at the end of the day. That's, that's basically the idea. Now, what we do know uh, from the business world <laughs> is that good products can sell without marketing. Okay, So the idea over here is that you have a great product and you keep it a secret. Nobody knows about it. It won't sell. In the case of startup ecosystem, it would mean that people would not know and not buy it. In this case, not relocate to your country or city or even leave it because they're unaware that the product really exists. Uh, however, I have to put a disclaimer over here. A bad product can sell even with good marketing. Okay, so the idea is that there has to be a good product, in this case, the ecosystem itself, uh, accompanying a great marketing campaign. Uh, so you need the both of them, basically, to, to side by side. You need both of them to grow uh, together. So the conclusion of what we, what we always say is that every ecosystem developer from the public sector should work on supporting their ecosystem growth, which is the product, keep on making the product better, while simultaneously marketing it. You have to do both things in the same time, just like any other startup. And just because we're from the public sector or ecosystem developer doesn't mean that we can allow ourselves to work differently from the business logic that exists out there of the world, the combination between our product and between our marketing and sales operation in a way. That's, uh, that's uh, a little bit about uh, um, uh, the thought about that. Uh, I'm going to, before I move on, I'll just try to answer a few questions. So Rodrigo is asking about uh, uh, elaboration on the ranking methodology scoring. We have this in the report at report.startuplink.com. I will just say it's a, a formula, a formula of about different parameters, about 30 of them running on all the cities and countries that we have in the database uh, and create a situation that basically we're focusing on the results 
not on opinions, not on surveys, not on emotions, but actual results. We will check more than anything the quantity, uh, how much activity is there, uh, the quality, how good is the activity, unicorns, global corporations, uh, traction of each startup in each location and so on, and a little bit the business environment as well. But uh, the full answer would be uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the report. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's have a look. Uh, Caleb, Caleb is asking about what is the definition of an ecosystem or what is an ecosystem? As far as we're concerned, an ecosystem is a location, uh, usually a city. So uh, the idea is, a, 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 let's say, a, an urban chunk, let's say, of a place where people can meet, work together, build projects together, a, a get knowledge from each other, and team up. A, so that's kind of like our definition a, a, of an ecosystem. Sushil is asking, I see there is a lot of interest in the rankings, a, how, how come no Canadian city is in the top 14, while Canada in the previous list is at number five? Uh, the reason Shushi is, is uh, two reasons. First of all, you have one country, uh, the USA, that uh, is ranked only once on the countries, but has many, many cities uh, in the top cities uh, because they are so developed. So they squeeze out a little bit uh, the, other, uh, the other cities on the cities ranking. The other reason is that the country's ranking is also taken into account the population size. And Canada specifically has a, a relatively lower population than the big countries. Uh, however, uh, in the cities, we don't take into account the population size. And over there, uh, basically, the cities that have the most population are ranked very, very high. So hopefully uh, that, was, uh, that was useful. Okay. Uh, and again, the report uh, explains a lot more of those things in great detail. So definitely recommended to, uh, to check it out. Okay, so we talked a little bit about startup ecosystem uh, promotion in general, the basic understanding, the combination of a product and a marketing a product. Uh, let's move on to uh, the catch-22 of startup ecosystems. Uh, a little bit of a distressing uh, uh, logic here. By the way, I'm hoping we're wrong, but this is what we've seen so far. Uh, the public sector, according to us, is not a uh, marketing oriented. Um, so the idea over here is that uh, um, the public sector usually is uh, avoiding risks and also avoiding, avoiding bold statements, you know, about, hey, we're the best in whatever, have a look at us and whatever. The public sector is uh, uh, just like now that I'm using finally my, my uh, Zara jacket for 50 euros. Uh, I took it out of the closet, especially for this event. The public sector is in a mentality of avoiding risk, uh, being well uh, well focused and uh, not so much into the startup mentality and that's okay that's the public sector that's what it should do however the private sector avoids ecosystem promotion because there is no uh, return on investment on ecosystem promotion for the public sector so that's something that for the private sector sorry so the idea over here is that the the, the private sector is great in marketing but has no interest in promoting the city it's not really their job they're not going to spend their budgets on this it leaves all of it for the public sector. Uh, one more uh, topic that is a little bit difficult on startup ecosystem promotion is that the brain drain is usually invisible. You would never see what you lost by not promoting your ecosystem. Uh, but there are some examples. Have a look at Shopify, for example. Shopify is, a, is a now a over $1 billion uh, company. Uh, the founder of Shopify is German and Shopify is now in Canada. So that just shows you a little bit what did, in this case, Germany lost uh, when uh, Shopify could have been a German company, but now it's a Canadian company. But nobody sees the real, th those $100 billion, uh, nobody really feels them. You know, it's just an anecdote, but it's much more than an anecdote. Uh, every city is losing massive economic returns because they're not promoting well enough, because they're not keeping their, uh, their entrepreneurs. So over here, you see a few problems. Again, public sector, not that much into marketing. Private sector, really great in marketing, but should not really uh, market their cities. That's the public sector job. Uh, the pain is not that appearing. It's only on the long term you understand what you lost. Startup ecosystem usually suffer from lack of sufficient marketing. So that's something that we have to take into account over here, um, which I think not enough people are uh, speaking about. 
So one more problem, and there are lots of problems in ecosystem promotion. I'm just trying to open a discussion about the, the cost over here. Uh, ecosystem marketing only makes an impact on the long term. Why is that? And why, why won't you see the returns really, really fast? You promote an ecosystem, you market it, and you see the benefits really fast? Not necessarily. Why is that? Every ecosystem is a story or a narrative. An ecosystem is a psychological story in many, many cases. Uh, it's what the general population is thinking about the ecosystem. It's what your local entrepreneurs are feeling towards the ecosystem in their city. Uh, and by the way, it's also what the foreign entrepreneurs and investors are thinking about the ecosystem as well. Usually they don't know anything about the ecosystem until you do aggressive marketing. That's the thing to say. And changing a narrative or opinions takes a lot of time. You have to take this into account. It's not something, it's not a Google AdWords campaign that you're doing something and you get the, the, the revenue the day after. You're basically changing people's feelings, opinion, and narrative about a location, about a city, about a country. It is built on accumulative information and evidence that has to be kept on being dripped into uh, the ecosystem, in, into people's minds in a way of kind of like exposing them to what really is happening. It takes a lot of time. And unlike re uh, regular marketing, uh, you don't see the results and you can't really connect the results with your resources. So once again, this uh, again leads to a decreased marketing of ecosystems and the loss of massive economic gains. So there is a problem here and it's very easy to identify this problem. It has very, very clear uh, reasons uh, as well. So that's, that's important to, to say more problems and more challenges in ecosystem promotion. Uh, some interesting things about uh, countries and cities and so on. Uh, what do we hear? You know, because in, in Startup Link ourselves, we're working with a lot of active public sector uh, people that are really interested in promoting their ecosystem and putting a lot of efforts on it. But what do, what do the others say? Or why don't the others uh, feel good about it? So first of all, the first thing that we're hearing is let the ecosystem speak for itself. It's a great ecosystem, you know, so we're gonna play it low key and let the product speak for itself. But then again, you can only do that if you're San Francisco. You're competing with the entire world on attention. If you're only going to let the product speak for itself, it's just like a company that disables its marketing branch and just has a product branch. It would not work. You have to constantly keep on selling and marketing. And um, so it's important. And, and uh, a lot of us feel a lot more comfortable as ecosystem developer having the product speak for itself. No, like absolutely not working. And um, many of us, and this is something we've seen with a lot of ecosystem developers are saying, look, we're not ready yet. You know, we still have to do this. We still have to build a website. We still have to do X, Y, Z. Uh, we still have to have a unicorn and so on. I have to tell you, the only city in the world that is ready for real startup ecosystem marketing is San Francisco. That's the only city in the world that should not be marketing its ecosystem. Everyone else should start uh, marketing right now, yesterday. Uh, the idea over here is that you must keep on marketing while building the product. It's not like when it's finished, I'm going to start marketing. Not at all. When it's finished, you, like San Francisco, you don't need marketing. Now is the time to market. Um, governments feel a little bit uncomfortable uh, doing the fake it until you make it approach. One of the reasons why we have a great ecosystem in Israel is that uh, people are actually faking it until you make it and feel good about it. Uh, the idea is that you have a dream and you believe ecstatically as an illusionist in a way sometimes in a massive dream. You really believe it's going to happen, although in reality you've got nothing. Uh, marketers near, need to do that. Governments usually find it hard to do this for good reasons, actually, because uh, they're more conservative and so on. But then again, uh, you know, there is a price to playing it safe. Uh, one, one more thing is not only the public sector, some cultures feel negative about bragging. Usually we, as human beings, we don't like the bragging people, you know, like uh, keep on talking about themselves and so on. But for marketing, you have to do it. Usually it's, it's in the Nordics, you know, that people are really shy and, and uh, to speak about achievements and so on. Over here, you have to go against your comfort zone and market and just keep on bragging keep on celebrating your success and so on. It's counterintuitive and it's against our nature. It's something that we need to do. Uh, I will say that we've noticed that in a few countries, entrepreneurship is even a problem. You know, on the perspective, perspective side, uh, the people are not that 
uh, let's say, happy to identify themselves as entrepreneurs. In some communist countries, for example, even now in, in Silicon Valley, uh, there is a little bit of a feeling of uh, uh, privileged uh, mentality and so on. So many, many uh, countries are, are still have a little bit in the back of their head a feeling that entrepreneurship is connected to manipulation, that it gives you some kind of an unfair advantage and so on. This also creates a situation that um, uh, people are not that keen to uh, market their ecosystem. And whenever you feel this way, go back to the slides before about the economic benefits, strategic benefits of a country and a city and the ability to give all the money that you generate from your startup ecosystem back to your local population, to the underprivileged uh, uh, population, to whoever is struggling, to understand why is it still important to go out of our comfort zone and, uh, and do that. So that's, uh, that's uh, important uh, to say. Uh, Kumar is asking a question about, um, does government or public sector investment in development of eco ecosystem work? If yes, what is the best, best method to promote it? Uh, I will answer this. Uh, in, uh, next slide, I will just say the following. We do not like to see governments that are micromanaging their ecosystem, that are very involved in, oh, I like this startup, I'm going to invest in this startup, and so on. That creates a mess. It creates a victim mentality. Uh, this micromanagement is not good. But governments must work on the macro level. The macro level is anything that has to do with infrastructure. In this case, it can be the marketing. It can be the data flow. It can be a consulting and strategy. Uh, we don't enjoy so much seeing governments pick winners and investing in specific winners. That's something that we don't really feel government should be at. Although at some point, uh, especially in the beginning, they should do also this. For example, building co-working spaces if, the, if a place doesn't have a co-working space, uh, organizing uh, activities and conferences and so on. But we much more connect to governments actually uh, working on the macro level, on the infrastructure level, than on the micro level of actually picking favorites. So uh, I'm hoping that that answered and specifically about what should they do on the promotion level. We're gonna speak about this uh, shortly. Okay, and thanks everyone for your questions, great questions. Let's talk about what can you do uh, to uh, develop your ecosystem. What are the things that you can actually do? Uh, and uh, I'm talking more than anything about promoting your ecosystem uh, in this sense. So the first thing for our dear ecosystem developers uh, is the following, uh, always be marketing, always be marketing. Uh, startups are out there hustling, pitching their startup and so on. Uh, you would see in this event as well, you have some ecosystem developers that feel comfortable of arriving, getting out of their comfort zone and pitching their startup ecosystem. That is absolutely splendid because I have to tell you, most public sector players are not doing that. Uh, they're playing it safe. So the idea is always be pitching, always be marketing, do what your startups are doing. You're not separate from your startups. And if they're there hustling and marketing, do the same for your city and country. This is incredibly important. And uh, again, it really, it's really is nice to see uh, that tech system developers are understanding this and are doing that. And uh, we, have, we have to congratulate them for, for that. Other than that, uh, I think uh, one of the things is to acknowledge that the private sector is marketing better than the public sector. And that's okay. So instead of uh, uh, like making sure that you do all the marketing, I would definitely advise uh, to hire PR companies, uh, to hire ecosystem policy advisors, uh, companies like uh, Startup Blink, uh, Startup Commons, Startup Genome, whatever has a startup before their name, those are great, like use the pub, the private sector. The private sector is obsessed about marketing. We know how to do it. So the idea is um, also to push a little bit to the private sector uh, as well um, for people that have core competencies. It could be PR companies or anything else, but the idea is work together with the private sector because the public sector is not necessarily a marketing uh, activity uh, generator. Um, what we also recommend to the public sector specifically on ecosystem promotion is to gather constantly data. You need to be aware about what's going on in the ecosystem in order to promote it. So uh, if there is any ranking about startup ecosystem, if there is any success story of a new unicorn or even an investment of $10 million, if this is new for your ecosystem, be aware of it. You cannot disconnect from your ecosystem. In order to promote your ecosystem, you have to be connected to the product. 
and understand what exactly is happening on the product level in order to effectively market it and celebrate whenever there is a milestone in the X system. Uh, one more thing that we recommend is to allow data flow. If no one knows who are the actors in the X system, it's a problem. So what we do in this case in Startup Link is that we build startup ecosystem maps together with our uh, clients. So everyone is exposed to a, a, a graphic, let's say visual uh, ecosystem uh, data source in a way. So building those are very, uh, very, very important. Recommend, by the way, not to do it on your own. It takes a lot of coding and a lot of time. Use solutions that already exist. Other than that, also use, uh, for example, other than Startup Link, one, one great solution that exists is Crunchbase. Make sure that your startups are on Crunchbase. You know, make sure that they're on all those global platforms out there to be in a situation that you're giving exposure to your startups and making sure that everyone can visualize and see them locally and also outside of your uh, country as well. One more recommendation would be to go to conferences and promote your hacker system. Uh, again, hustling, going there uh, with your suit, without your suit, and just talking to people about why should they move to your city and country. This is how you attract talent. And you can't do it necessarily. Now you can do it from your office, by the way, but you have to be proactive about it. You have to get out there. You have to convince people. You have to be a marketing person. You're basically doing marketing for your city and for your country. It's beautiful but you have to love it and you have to uh, be in a situation that you're very active on it um, and that's critical. And that's something that we don't see in all the government entities. Um, one more thing that we recommend is to create and distribute promotional reports and um, high quality blog content so people can find you on Google. Uh, do an ecosystem podcast. Again, all those things is something that Startup Link can do for you. Other companies can do for you, but the idea is get out there, make sure that everyone is interested in the ecosystem can find it. So those are uh, only a, a list of things. Uh, other, other than that, I'll just uh, go over with a few other uh, things over here is to team up with local successful founders. Uh, they are the, your real ambassadors, the people that have made something in the ecosystem. Team up with them, speak with them, ask them what they need. Uh, put them as poster boys and girls on your promotion, on your press or whatever. Make them the, hand, the, the heroes of your ecosystem. That's the idea. Uh, by the way, make sure they don't leave too prematurely. At some point, if your ecosystem is small, they would have to leave to the San Francisco or to the Londons of the world. Make sure that they stay as much as possible. You will, um, the, the longer they stay, the more your, their company, even if it puts its headquarters somewhere else, is more ingrained in the narrative of your ecosystem and has more presence in your ecosystem. So that's, that's important. Figure out who are the heroes of the startup ecosystem, the hero entrepreneurs, connect with them. Uh, other things that we recommend, uh, get the highest level of policymakers involved. You want to get the prime ministers involved, the mayors involved, the ministers involved, and so on. Uh, show them the success, get them speaking about their ecosystem. You know, for example, the, the prime ministers of uh, Israel is very active on promoting the ecosystem. The president of France, Macron, is also very active at uh, 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 in Canada as well, Justin Trudeau, Trudeau is very, very active. So the idea is that uh, make sure that the biggest, uh, let's say the most influential policymakers are in this game, that they're aware of it, that they're promoting it. They're your marketing people as well. In the end of the day, they're also doing marketing for the X system. Um, one more thing would be to celebrate any success in any chance that you've got via press and events. You heard you're in a small ecosystem and a startup just raised $2 million, have a press release on it. Yeah, you as the, as the ecosystem developers, celebrate it. Uh, there is an event of uh, having a first unicorn in the ecosystem. Do an event, we'll do a conference celebrating this. Uh, uh, Vilnius, for example, in Lithuania did uh, a, a museum, startup museum, where people actually can, can go to the museum. Uh, I think they have the startup link map over there, and you can see the startups on the map and so on, and see their stories and so on. So the idea is celebrate success. By celebrating success, we get into people's heads and more than anything our local entrepreneurs that they are in the right place and that they shouldn't leave um, and also one more interesting uh, element here is to be innovative yourself you're promoting a startup ecosystem work like a startup uh, on promotion policy like do things on regulation and policies that don't exist for example nomad visas e-residencies um, uh, Startup Chile basically did an accelerator that if you go to Santiago, they give you $40,000 uh, to per entrepreneurs that stay there for half a year and so on. 
many interesting things that you can do. You have to go out of your comfort zone. You have to take risks. But those are things that can be done relatively easily. So um, that's basically it. I'll just say that a lot of the things that I mentioned are included in the services that we give. So you can have a look at ecosystempartnership.startuplink.com. I'm also marketing. My startup as well always be marketing. We can't be shy of marketing our, our, our city, our startup. It's, it's absolutely a critical part of uh, running a city, of running a startup. Let me have a quick look on the questions uh, just to see if uh, uh, I can answer a few. I won't be able to answer all of them. Um, let's see. Um, yes, uh, Caleb is asking why, why, why do I think that most of the most important startups in the world uh, are in the United States and not, um, why isn't there an Australian Google, for example? The reason is again, network effect. In order to create something of magnitude of $1 trillion company, you need it to be located in a place where it pushes it up. And uh, that's the reason. That's basically the reason why the United States is so dominant. It started the earliest out of everyone. It built Silicon Valley the earliest, and it's still receiving all those massive uh, ecosystem benefits. Uh, but you can see now that in countries like Canada and in Israel as well, and of course the United Kingdom, you see really nice case studies of success, not in this scale, but still a uh, plus $50 billion companies, a lot of them, and it's only growing. Uh, of course, in China as well, needless to say, um, Europe is a little bit lagging, and uh, Australia as well, because it, it entered the game relatively late, but uh, you will get there. But the idea is you have to build on uh, the network effects that were created before, and uh, that's also the price of starting late. You can't start late and expect uh, it to be very, very fast, so that's, uh, that's uh, important to say. Uh, Rodrigo is asking about the impact of remote working on ecosystem developer, a very interesting question. I don't see a lot of impact, to be honest, in the beginning. Why? Because there is a network effect. So, for example, if you have a big tower, let's say, and everything is built on this tower and there is a massive network effect, by squashing the tower and just saying Silicon Valley is now everywhere, it's great, it's equal opportunity and whatever, but you can't build towers anymore. Where is the network effect? So I actually think that uh, we as humans, as social beings and so on, still need some kind of a common tribe, a common uh, anchor and a tribe, a city, a location that binds us and actually allows us to build something of a network. Uh, I don't really see it happening on the cloud. If it would happen, a lot of this network effect would be lost and I think uh, we won't create the same magnitude of things. So I'm really, I'm really positive about cities not losing their impact uh, just yet. Um, unless we have a new a virtual reality, the metaverse and so on, but it's a very long distance away and uh, not, not necessarily happening right now, but great question. Um, let's see, I will just take one more. Uh, uh, actually, we're out of time, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue and then, and then see if we can take more questions. So, because I don't think I'm gonna go over the slides. So I'll just say over here, uh, in general, nothing beats success. Um, uh, remember this, this is really, really important. At the end of the day, we can uh, engineer uh, whatever we can and, and so on and so on. But at the end of the day, the, the human brain is, is working on copying and a little bit of seeing and being inspired and sometimes also jealous of success. That's what really drives uh, entrepreneurs to become entrepreneurs. In the end of the day, uh, the day this is a game to make sure that uh, as many people as possible will become entrepreneurs instead of doing the path of nine to five. By the way, the path of nine to five makes more sense. It makes more sense financially on risk awareness and so on. If you want to be a responsible person, you do not open a startup. Uh, however, our job as ecosystem developers is to make sure that as many people as possible are joining a game where they only have 10% chances of success uh, because it's critical for our economy. And in order to do that, we have to show those that are on the fence that uh, the risk success that is being achieved uh, and that their neighbor in Israel, for example, everyone has a story about their neighbor doing a massive exit because it's so widespread. So the big success stories, although they take time, uh, uh, are helping a lot until they happen. Celebrate the small success. So in Israel, every, every exit that is less than, let's say, 100 million probably will not even be mentioned in newspapers and so on. But in other places, an exit of $2 million is going to be a massive milestone for the X system. So they always customize and celebrate whatever uh, success that is 
a new milestone for your ecosystem, make sure that people uh, know about it. Uh, connected a little bit to the to the point that I've made before, that we as got, uh, you know as ecosystem developers, at the end of the day, cannot really micromanage an ecosystem. At the end of the day, with all our best intentions and best efforts and so on, uh, we're really dependent on the private sector, on the entrepreneurs themselves. So at the end of the day, we really want to encourage them to get into the game, and we do this with promotion. That's how we do this. That's how we encourage the local entrepreneurs to stay to build the company. And that's how we encourage the foreign entrepreneurs and the investors to arrive. Again, the benefits are incredible. Most star, most uh, cities and countries are not putting enough efforts in this and are not putting enough resources in this uh, because of the moral hazards and the problems that I mentioned before. Hopefully, this uh, seminar would kind of like uh, uh, change a little bit the uh, mindset about this. And yeah, I think let's. Um, in the very short time that we have, let's go over two case studies that I really, uh, I really like. Uh, those are those are case studies about about cities, about countries that decided that they're doing something uh, different. The first story is really about uh, a country that I really commend on what they've done. The second story, by the way, uh, is Israel. Uh, over there, it was much less active. Uh, but let's 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 uh, let's just have a look at Estonia. There are no real conclusions here, but just a, a fun story to to talk about. Uh, I honestly think Estonia is one of the most successful ecosystem promoters globally. Note that I did not say that they're one of the most uh, successful ecosystems. They're one of the most successful ecosystem promoters globally. We can learn from them because they have a, not necessarily a, a, an ideal situation. It's a very small country, less than two million people. Uh, they had an early success story with Skype that was actually Swedish, and the only uh, the, uh, Skype only outsourced uh, the development of Skype uh, to Estonia, but it was still enough to create an initial product that you can market. If you would be shy, you would not market it because it was mostly a Swedish startup, but they're not shy. Um, relatively low startup activity after that. There was no developed investor scene. Actually, there isn't also now. It's not that developed. You go now to Estonia, you would see that you don't have a lot of uh, investors lining up, uh, uh, waiting to give money, but still uh, uh, not enough entrepreneurs as well because it's a very small country. So the government and the public sector in Estonia has done something very smart. They basically say, we go full speed aggressive on marketing. We don't care. And uh, uh, they did uh, creative and aggressive marketing. Uh, they have the Skype mafia of actually the Skype uh, Estonian uh, developers that received equity that created other uh, companies. And they did very interesting things that is counterintuitive on changing the regulation on creating very revolutionary programs that might not really influence that much of the ecosystem, but receive a lot of buzz. They know how to get uh, press attention. Uh, they did e-residency, e they did the nomad visa. Again, this is, those are not things that are going to create uh, big startups or bring to you the most serious startups, but they created a lot of buzz. And the buzz has created a situation that now there is a global narrative uh, of Estonia as the most advanced digital nation out there. Again, if you go to Estonia, this is not necessarily the case, but because uh, they're very competent in startup ecosystem marketing, they've created um, a, a perception that is very interesting and is very beneficial because more and more people are now going to Estonia. Maybe not the type that they need, but still it's working. They have good marketing. Uh, the product might be lagging behind the marketing, but the marketing is outstanding. And, uh, and uh, this actually brought better results for the X system. They have startups like Pipedrive and Bolt and TransferWise that have formed. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of them have, have left, mainly to, to London, I think, Bolt and TransferWise, but still uh, they've created a situation that uh, there is a, a small gap between reality and the narrative that is boosting the reality. Remember, the fake it until you make it, a beautiful example uh, that seems to be working. And they have to receive a lot of credit. There is a lot to learn from, from the Estonians in this, uh, in this case. Israel is a very uh, different example, but uh, still, it is the startup na nation. It has the startup nation image. The beauty in Israel is that actually uh, the product uh, is, is also outstandingly much mature and very well developed. So the idea over here in Israel, that this is another approach, uh, but don't trust on your entrepreneurs being Israeli entrepreneurs, is that uh, the, uh, the private sector success uh, was unintentional. 
It was created by people's mindset, by risk awareness in, in averseness in, in being in Israel and so on, uh, to be in a situation that uh, by creating the army, which is uh, actually one of the world's biggest accelerators, the way I look at it, the Israeli army, a lot of innovation is happening there. So uh, Israel is a situation in which the public sector didn't do that much or almost nothing, uh, but it kept out of the way. It let entrepreneurs uh, build their things without over bureaucracy, without taxing them and so on and so on. So this is an example, unlike the Estonian one where the public sector was not that in in involved, but the product was so good that the narrative built up to it. So in a way, people could not, uh, could not ignore the, the success of the, of the product in a way. So that was a, a pretty interesting, let's say, um, case study uh, of, uh, of what's happening here. And again, two different approaches. I like the Estonian one uh, because the Israeli ecosystem is much more advanced, it's much more mature. It was built by the private sector, but the Estonian one was actually because of very, very smart and aggressive marketing. And uh, I think that if we can take uh, uh, an example from that, that uh, that would make uh, that would make uh, total sense. And I think we're uh, a little bit out of time. So for the last slide, I'll just up give a quick update on uh, uh, some things that were were the next things uh, in Star of Link. Some updates. The first one is that uh, uh, we have a fintech uh, ranking coming up. Uh, uh, I think in March with Flexible. Uh, very. Very interested to see what's going to be the results there. Each vertical kind of shows totally different results, so that's great. Um, our global report is in late April or in the beginning of May. Uh, very interesting also to see what's going to happen in ecosystem. We just love uncovering the truths about ecosystem and seeing uh, the rankings. Uh, I will say that we have a, a, a contributors a program of people that are helping us on the data for those uh, um, uh, uh, reports especially for the global report. So if you're a data freak and you really like to, to influence reports and uh, kind of like uh, arrive to conclusions, feel free uh, at startuplink.com slash blog slash startuplink hyphen internship. So you can have a look. Uh, we have uh, about five or six interns and it's really great to work with the contributors so far. Um, we just love uncovering the truth about startup ecosystem. That's our hobby. And yeah, I think that's basically it for today. So we're done. Uh, thank you, everyone. Sorry I couldn't reach to all the, the questions. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have a recording uh, of this, so you can view um, this one uh, again later.